Profiling Hackers, the Psychology of Cybercrime. My name is Mark T. Hoffman. I'm a crime and intelligence analyst, or what most of you would most likely call a criminal profiler. If you think of cybercrime, you may have something like this in mind. On television, it always makes these fancy sounds. And you see a kid with a hoodie in front of a laptop with green text on the screen. Well, reality is different. And on television, you never really get to see the face. Hackers are always presented like this or from behind, but you never really see the face. Today, I would like to unmask the face of hackers, so to say. I would like to talk about the profiles and motives of hackers. I would like to talk about psychological manipulation, about social engineering techniques they are using to attack us, and what we can do to become a human firewall. As a profiler, I am interested in behavior. I analyze behavior, and I try to identify the motives and the psychology behind that behavior, because with everything we do, we show something of who we are. With every decision we make, we show something of who we are. And also hackers make a series of decisions. They are choosing targets. They are choosing methods. Pretty often, they make phone calls. They write text messages. They write phishing mails. And with everything they do or fail to do, they not only leave digital traces, but also traces of their personality. And very often, the analysis of language is a key element in profiling hackers. Let me give you an example with the word behavior itself. A person from the United States, an American, would most likely write the word behavior like this. A person from the UK would more likely spell the word behavior like this. And an idiot might spell the word behavior like this. So based on the words someone is using, based on the analysis of language, I can try to make a probability statement about an unknown offender. Yes, cyber criminals are hard to catch, but in many cases, they are not as invisible as they might think. So what can a profiler tell you about cybercrime? Well, quite a lot. More than 90% of all cyber attacks or cybersecurity breaches are caused by human error. So humans, people, are the weakest link in the cybersecurity chain. Let me be very clear about this. Cybercrime is not just a technical problem, it's a psychological problem. It's a people's problem, it's clearly a management problem. Computers are the weapons, but the perpetrators and also the victims are humans. Any door is only as secure as the person who is holding the key or the password. So you can have the best fancy high security door in the world. If I manipulate you to give me the key, it's useless. You can have the best fancy high security firewall system in the world. If I manipulate you to give me the password, it's useless. Amateurs hack systems, professionals hack people. This is a quote by security expert Bruce Snyder, and he is damn right. So what can we say about the profiles of hackers? Who are the people behind the attacks? Well, pretty often cybercrime doesn't look like this. It looks more like this. Law enforcement professionals and intelligence professionals and security professionals like to use the term crime as a service. So pretty often, cyber criminals work in company-like structures. They have something like a supply chain. They have something like quality management. And sometimes, they even have customer support. So if you or your company gets attacked, it may not come from a kit in front of a laptop with a hoodie. It may come from a call center-like structure anywhere in the world like this. 
But of course, there are some individual hackers. We call them black hat hackers. So the ones with the black hats, these are, of course, the bad guys. According to the current state of science, what can we say about the profiles of black hat hackers? We can say this. Most of them, some studies say more than 90% are male. Around about 80% are under 30 years old. The majority of them, around about 60%, started at a very young age, between 10 and 15 years old. They have above average intelligence, they are pretty often well-educated, and 90% do not have a low socioeconomical status. So they are young, they are intelligent, they are pretty often well-educated. Why the hell do they do what they do? The main motives in descending order are money, financial gain, espionage, and fun, ideology, or simply trolling. Well, so they do it mostly for money. If I look at this list of motives, I'm a little bit skeptical, because as we just learned, they are young, they are intelligent, they are well-educated, and they do not necessarily come from difficult or broken home environments. So if they want to make money, why don't they just work for Google? or any other Silicon Valley company. They could make a ton of money in a legal way. So why are they committing crimes? Why do they make money that way? Another psychological motive comes into play, which is called thrill-seeking. Or in psychology, we sometimes like to call this challenge to beat the system. So they like the feeling of being cleverer than the FBI. Never underestimate the role of ego, challenge, and thrill-seeking in cybercrime. And I'm not just talking theory. I met hackers myself, I did my own research, and one of my subjects told me this. I analyze people. In the end, human hacking works the same way that computer hacking works. You always look for vulnerabilities and try to exploit them. So they are, social engineers are analyzing us. They are analyzing our psychological weak points and they try to attack, they try to exploit our psychological weak points. But what are our psychological weak points? What are the psychological manipulation techniques? What are some of the social engineering techniques? I want to show you a little illusion. For this illusion, I just need a silk, and I put the silk in my hand. Then I can show my hand empty, and the silk magically turns into an egg. As I can see, you're not that amazed. And you're right, it's not that clever, it's just a plastic egg with a hole inside it. But I want to use this to teach you a lesson about the art of misdirection. So the fake egg goes in my left pocket and the hanky goes in my right pocket. And then I was fiddling around with my right pocket and I tried to direct your attention to the silk while I secretly got out the fake egg with my other hand. Then I told you I put the silk in my hand, but in fact I carefully put the silk inside the fake egg. Then, of course, I can show my hand empty and then it magically turns into an egg. Well, not that spectacular, but as I just told you, I'm going to teach you a lesson about the art of misdirection. Explain this. As I just told you, this will be a lesson about the art of misdirection. Well, what did just happen? I created an illusion inside an illusion. So basically, I fooled you while explaining how you have been fooled. And this way, I totally eliminated your critical thinking. In the first round, you all watched closely and you tried to see the secret behind it. But in the second round, you relaxed. I told you, relax, now I show you how it's done. And this way, I eliminated your critical thinking. Again, I fooled you while explaining how you have been fooled, and this is what hackers do all the time. They hack you while telling you that you have been hacked. And this way, 
they totally eliminate your critical thinking. Pretty often, phishing mails and short messages start like this. We have detected some unusual activity on your account. And of course, now you need to click here to verify your credit card information. Or your Amazon account has been locked. There was some suspicious or criminal activity. You need to click here to regain access to your account. Or your account was used to buy a $250 gift card. If you want to cancel the order and confirm your credit card information, click here. So they tell you that you have been hacked. In fact, you haven't been hacked. But when you click on these links, you will be hacked. Now, you might say, well, I'm smart. I won't click on these links. Well, I'm not sure. If you're distracted or if you just made an Amazon order the day before, I'm not sure if you wouldn't click on these links. But even if just two people out of 100, just 2% click on these links, well, it's enough. If I send 100 mails, two people are going to click on these links. And this is a very low estimate. It will be way more. And of course, it's always urgent. You need to do it right now. Hackers never say, take your time. <laughs> you always need to do something now. Otherwise, there will be a huge damage, and it will have a huge negative impact. You need to do something now without thinking about it. Let me give you another example how social engineers and how hackers try to exploit our, to exploit our psychological weak points. They are using the so-called sympathy principle. They exploit our tendency to trust and to like people. Imagine you are in the subway on your way to work, and it's a rainy Monday morning. It's going to be a very, very long and boring day. But suddenly, she gets on the train, and you are getting nervous. You would love to approach her. You would love to talk to her. But you don't really have the guts to do so. But then suddenly, she stands right next to you. This would be your chance to talk to her, but still, you don't really do it. You pretend to read something on your smartphone, but you don't do it. She stands so close to you that she's almost touching you, which is almost a little bit weird, and then suddenly she gets off the train. What did just happen? Is she a pickpocket or something? Then you reach inside your pocket, and inside your pocket, you find a little USB flash drive with a heart on it. What might be on there? A phone number? Pictures? Now, be honest. Could you stand the curiosity of not plugging this into your company's computer to see what's on there? Well, probably not. And this may be the beginning of a negative butterfly effect unfolding and a very serious cyber attack. I tell you a little secret from the intelligence world. Female spies are bloody good, and it's partly because of sexism. Spying, crime, and hacking, this is seen as a man's job. And this is why women are by far the best, because they are unsuspicious. If someone looks nice or sympathetic, it's really hard to see this person as a potential threat. So you don't see the evil if someone has a face like an angel. But yes, female agents are without any doubt the best in the world. There's a good friend of mine, a German ex-intelligence official, and he also confirms that more and more women are used in industrial espionage. So not just hackers try to spy on you, but also secret agents from intelligence agencies from foreign countries. So some of these best trained agents in the world may wait for you at the hotel bar with the face of an angel. This is Silk Road. For a very long time, this has been the largest online drug dealing marketplace on the darknet. And this is the man behind Silk Road. Excuse me, but he looks like a character from High School Musical. I just want to make a point here. Many criminals and spies are very successful because they don't look like criminals or they don't look like spies. He looks pretty sympathetic. He's not a hacker, but anyway, many criminals and many spies look pretty unsuspicious and pretty sympathetic. So they are using their appearance. They are using 
our tendency to like and to trust them against us. The time is running and tick-tocking away, but I want to give you one last example how hackers try to exploit our psychological vulnerabilities. The authority principle. We are much more influenceable when we consider someone an authority. And many companies use this principle all the time. This is the Dr. Best TV commercial. They just combined all the authority stereotypes in one TV spot. As you can see, it's an elderly man with glasses, and he wears a tie, and he looks like a medical doctor, and he does some kind of experiment, and it plays in a scientific lab, and everything in this picture, and also the brand. It's called Dr. Best. So they just combined all the authority symbols to convince us to pay much more for toothbrushes, and people do it. And cyber criminals do the same principle, the same persuasion technique all the time. So they are using authority symbols, logos, brands, and names of institutions or government agencies to convince us that, this, that they are the authorities and that this is a real mail. So they send emails from the FBI or the Bank of America or the IRS, and they exploit, they use our tendency to trust experts and to trust authorities. So what did you learn, hopefully? Cybercrime is a psychological problem. More than 90% of cyber attacks are caused by human error. Cyber criminals, hackers, social engineers play with human emotions. They play them like a piano. They know what buttons to push to get a certain reaction. So what can we do? What can we do to become a human firewall? Well, the cyber defense strategy of many companies could be described like this. Team, I don't care. I hope it won't hit us, and I think we are too small, or we are not interesting enough. Well, guess what? You're wrong. There are two types of companies. Companies that have been attacked, and companies that will be attacked. This is not a cyber defense strategy. This is naive. The key is awareness. A talk like this, a speech like this, a workshop can definitely help to prevent crimes from happening. Awareness alone can be a key element in the prevention of cybercrime. If someone calls you and asks you for your password on the phone, I'm not sure if you are going to give it at this point. If you get an email from Amazon that your account has been hacked and you need to click on this link, I'm not sure if you're going to click on this link. If you find a USB flash drive on the ground, I'm not sure if you are going to plug it into your computer out of curiosity. And if you get an email by the FBI or the IRS, I'm not sure if you will transfer the money or click on these links. So awareness alone can help to prevent cybercrime. My name is Mark T. Hoffman. I'm a profiler and speaker, and I thank you. Stay safe, and thank you for your undivided attention. <laughs>